Well, happy day! It's our sports performance webinar, and I'm so excited because it's seven o'clock and it's still light outside. I'm sure when I leave, it will look this way, but um, man, I love the spring and the summer and the sunshine. It's just so, so exciting. And I love spring sports and track specifically, but I'm going to be talking a lot about athletes. And I know I've got people registered on this webinar who are registered because they really want points for uh, March Madness. And then I have parents on here and kids on here who want to improve their athletic performance, body awareness, balance, agility, reaction time, their strength in their muscles, um, and recovery from injuries. And then I also have some parents on here that just really want their kids to have a better sports experience all around to even try it because they lack that body awareness. So this is going to be for everybody. Um, because we're going to get down to the foundations of how the brain and the body actually work together and ways to improve that. So, um, and kids on here, I think you guys are going to learn something really special about um, the way that your body moves. And I know most people that answer my trivia questions in the office, um, the kids are getting it more right than the adults. So I feel like they're already in, <laughs> I think they're already in the lead. So, <clears throat> The biggest thing that we look at, and let me just kind of change my screen around here so you can see the slides and not my face so much. Ah, hang on. All right. Let's 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 change my view. Give me one second here. Nope. Opposite. Wow. We're going to get this, folks. Hang on. There I am. Okay. You don't really need to see my face, but I like this layout anyway. Um, when you're looking at the way that the body moves, this word called proprioception, which we're going to talk about. And all of these other words, they have a lot to do with athletics, but they also have a lot to do with our lives because we're always moving our body and um, our brain is always in control of it. But they're very, very dependent on how well the brain understands where your body parts are. So when you are looking at um, the way somebody moves their body, so if you're observing your child or if you're watching um, an adult, an elderly person, the way that they're moving their body is the way that the brain is organized. Um, and it's the way their nervous system is reacting as well. So if you see somebody excited, like you can see excited body language. If someone's sad, if someone's depressed, you watch their body language. It always matches. When you're looking at um, somebody running, and you see like, oh man, that is the most beautiful running form you've ever seen. It's a disgrace and precision, right? I just watched a track meet and you're like, wow. And then you see another person run and their arms aren't quite swinging right, right? Like, like one's tucked in and the other one's over here and maybe a leg is kind of swinging out instead of in the middle. That is, that's the brain. That's the brain not understanding where the body parts are. You see, a, you know, maybe an elderly person pushing a grocery cart and they're really slow. They're kind of hunched over. They're, they're, they're moving real gingerly because the brain doesn't know with precision where their body parts are and they start to they start to lose that association and with time and with age we definitely watch it with speed of the brain and how much that will slow it down because our brain is fed through movement the brain always it, it needs its batteries charged through movement and not very many people realize that the brain is is literally like a battery and movement can charge it but there's some people that have that wild crazy brain they're like my kid doesn't stop moving their body they need sports for this movement it's the way the brain is reacting so um for those of you that are in my office and you run um, neurological scans and you know what those look like i'll show you which one we're talking about um, and just a couple of slides here, it's that EMG, when you're looking at brain organization and those body parts, what we have found out, and that I know we've spent so much money um, as a whole on looking at, um, I didn't spend any, but looking at the brain and how it works in modern medicine, in all the advancements that we have, we look at the brain and we're like, we've started to understand, oh my gosh, it's just constantly on it's constantly changing it does all of these things it has to receive information for through their nervous system you guys have learned that under chiropractic care that that's where it gets its information but one of the things it does have to do and it spends most of its time and its energy on is movement body awareness and having a 3d image up to date all the time second to second millisecond to millisecond understanding of where your body parts are so it has to make this 3d image inside of its head inside of its brain that little brain does it has to know where are my body parts when we don't know where our body parts are that's when we're a fall injury where we fall we injure ourselves that's when we are the unsmooth 
runner, um, somebody that can't quite get the coordination down. And sometimes it's it's not without a matter of trying. You know, there's some of us that have tried to play a sport over and over and over again, and the brain can't quite figure it out. And there's some kids that you look at and you're like, oh, wow, they're not real, you know, neurologically coordinated. And there's other ones that are. It's very, very dependent on that 3D image that your brain has, and it has to stay up to date. And what will happen um, is you start to lose something that's called proprioception, and that means body awareness, movement. It's another sense inside of our body that's really important. I know we talk about the five senses, but proprioception is a sense that is um, largely, largely important with that. I know that this picture um, looks kind of crazy, um, and I'll explain to you what it, what it is in a moment, but when you're looking at proprioception, what does it are these little tiny stretch receptors or muscle spindles. We call them the eyes. Of, well, in our spine, we call them the eyes. They, anytime our muscle bends or moves, it's sending a signal to the brain to tell us where we're at. So when you're looking at the overall density of muscle spindles, of stretch receptors, of telling the, the brain where the body is at, only 10% of those are in our limbs. The majority is in the spine. And I know you guys that are in your chiropractic care already know this because we talk about it all the time. The stretch receptors are called the eyes of our spine. We can never see our back. We can never see our spine and what's protecting um, those nerves and all of that neurological signaling that's going to the brain. It's in those dense muscles. The, they're very dense in the muscles of the spine. Over half of them are in the spine and over half of that is just up here in this upper cervical spine. That's why we pay really close attention. So this picture that I have on here, I know it looks kind of like a crazy spider or something, um, but it's got a little chunk of skin there on the left. It's got a, I don't even know if you guys can see my mouse. It's got a, a muscle that would be um, part of a joint or what I'm talking about in the spine as well as some smooth muscle and then they have a picture of all the nerves how it comes back to the spinal cord and then up the brain so there's a little chunk of the spinal cord that's that disc shape in the back and of course this is the scientific one so it's showing us all the whole map of how um, this works and what that journey is so you don't need to know those details, but what you do need to understand is that brain is in constant need of knowing where those are. And we always know when our body's not moving well, including um, our visceral organs, doesn't feel it doesn't feel real good when the bowels aren't moving. But it also doesn't feel good when we don't know where those body parts are, and that's where we often see those injuries happen. You know, Dad gets out that football and wants to play with his kids and show them, you know, the glory days and he hasn't been practicing those movements anymore and the brain has lost it because if you remember our last trivia question was how does the brain learn through time and repetition and when you haven't been doing the same things over and over again we've started to lose not only movement and flexibility but it's mostly brain awareness of where the body parts are and that's when dad you know dad blows his back or his knee i'm making fun of dads i'm sure this actually does happen to moms it happened to me on mother's day i played kickball with my kids and i rolled my ankle i rolled my ankle running to second base it was really pathetic um, but that is what happens and when i was in high school I actually, I didn't have a chiropractor. I didn't know about it. And I was a chronic ankle sprainer. And if I would have known that, darn it, my brain didn't know where that ankle was. And then after an injury, it really lost association with where it was in a sudden movement after that injury, it was even harder for it to heal. So now that's why we are, we are not only taking a look at did that injury happen because the brain didn't know where the body parts are, or was it like you just got freaking hammered by somebody and now your body has tried to respond to that injury and now it's kind of had an acute um, loss of where those body parts are and it can happen either direction. What we call that is dyskinesia. So that's a really special word um, that means abnormal movement. Dys, D-Y-S always means it's not right. Kinesia means movement. So when your body is injured or when your brain is not getting the right signals, we call that dyskinesia, abnormal movement. And typically it is misaligned. There is a fixation from either an injury or we just haven't been moving those body parts. And that really stresses the brain. So stress gets, you know, it can get a good rap and it can get a bad rap inside of our, our um, office. And most of the time we know that stress can be great. Exercise is stress. Um, as long as we heal and recover from it, which I'm going to talk about here in a moment. So this is that scan that we're looking at, dyskinesia. And um, this is this is a word you guys can tell the girls at the front that you've watched this show um, or this show, this webinar. Dyskinesia. This is 
this is a huge piece of that body awareness and this is a huge piece of that emg scan that we're looking at so we're measuring the eyes of the spine we're measuring the muscle spindles what kind of energy are we using just to sit there it should be really nice and organized because we know it's going to be a lot more energy to move our bodies around so having a really sound sense of body awareness and also a sound um, amount of activity that's in that muscle is really important because when there's too much and when our brain doesn't know what's happening um, once again that causes stress inside of the brain and a, a stressed brain is not a happy brain and it doesn't make really good choices so one of the pieces that we look at in this scan once again that upper neck is really has over half of those muscle spindles that makes it's a really big deal if there is dyskinesia up top because it, sometimes it doesn't even matter what's going on beneath. This guy is is um, air traffic control. He's landing the planes, and if he doesn't know where to land the planes, everyone's confused beneath. So that's why you guys always know we check in the neck first to make sure that's clear. Um, this yellow bar is always important to know because those are parts where the brain's not getting much signal at all. This is a point where the muscle is probably so tight and there's so much activity in there for so long. You can only contract your bicep for so long, and every muscle inside your body is the same way before it gets tired and has to let loose. It doesn't have flexibility when that happens. And now your spine, since it's got lots of layers to it, instead of those baby muscles working and that asks the next layer of muscles to work and then the next layer until you have really tight and flexible um, back. And that's sometimes when the adults come in and for kids, they're coming in typically from um, the lack of body awareness and their lack of their brain fe feeling calm. And when your brain is once again in that fight or flight mode, it doesn't make great choices. So here's what happens to your brain. Your brain can do um, very some wonderful, wonderful things. And one of the things it can do is respond to stress. It's supposed to, it exercises stress. So that's what we call that sympathetic side of your nervous system, your brain and all of the nerves that control it, it can go into stress mode. And stress mode can be great. Once again, what happens when we're under stress? Our heart starts racing, the blood pressure goes up, we feel really warm, all of the energy comes out to our limbs, we call our motor system to be able to run and flee or, or play a sport. Um, we All of our senses go up, we're on high alert, our pupils are dilated, we hear really well, our tactile, which is touch, on the bottoms of our feet, that's turned up. And we are ready, typically in fight or flight, to play a sport, have an argument, um, you know, win a race, have a test. It is such a great thing to have unless we get stuck there. Then all of our senses stay up. Then we're really uncomfortable. Then we're really impulsive and reactive because it never calms down. Our heart is always racing. Things make us feel anxious. We're kind of triggered really quickly. And um, that's a brain that can't learn. So if you're one of those people that are like, man, we've been going and trying sports over and over again, or just even trying to put on a uniform for sports and we can't quite do it, well, we're probably stuck there. And you guys know a lot of reasons that our body gets stuck in fight or flight because we talk about it in the office as well. And the reverse of that is the calm side of our nervous system, where we should be when we're healing, resting, and digesting, and repairing. This is where our body actually learns what we did during the day and actually sets in neuro patterns in your brain. And they figure this out when, um, hey, Perry fam, uh, we figure this out actually on a rat. They were having a rat, and I didn't. I didn't put this rat in captivity, but you know, people do this. And it was trying to learn a route inside of one of those mat ra rat mazes. And what they had found as they were trying to figure out how these, you know, how these rats are learning, when this rat fell asleep, they kept the electrodes on the head. And that's when they were watching the brain go back through the maze. That's when we learn what we've done during the day. So parasympathetic only happens at night, should only happen at night. While we're healing, while we're resting, while we're learning all the things new, and we're repairing from whatever stress we experience during the, the day. And this is when exercise is great. This is when sports are wonderful. We've experienced that high of sports and all that adrenaline, and we've gone into fight or flight. Now we need to recover because we can't stay that way or we get really, really tired. And I know this firsthand. This is what we measure on this scan. So you guys that have had an HRV, anybody that's overstuck in stress and they have had way more stress than they have had healing and repairing, which is on this side of the, uh, the nervous system, we start losing our battery charge. And this is an, actually a picture of an athlete who wasn't healing, who he was having injuries, who was very, very coordinated, but 
he didn't have enough recovery time. So um, this is a big, a really good picture of what overtraining can do and when we can't heal and repair. I want to give you guys another little picture of the that side of your nervous system and what it looks like. And this is why this is really important to us and to chiropractors. Now these two have flipped around. So here the sympathetic is over here on this right hand side and parasympathetic is on the left. I should probably somehow figure out how to switch this back. But when you look at what it does, they're very different. But we also want to look at the neurological control. So you can see this parasympathetic nervous system. Most of the control is upper cervical spine, right by the brainstem, right by air traffic control, right by the area that runs that show with our movement compared to the sympathetic that has all these neurological connections because we need to have it happen fast, right? As soon as we go into fight or flight, everything has to react. So we need a lot of neurological connections there. And many of them are that mid back. So they do the opposite. Um, they have the opposite effect. And this healing piece of our brain is that vagus nerve. If you guys remember that gut and brain connection, that's how your brain gets information from, from that healing side, but to see how your body is resting, how it is digesting your food, how it's running your heart and your lungs and your liver and your pancreas and your spleen. So a lot of people, a lot of um, athletes, when they're in this spot that they were on this last slide, let me go back. Oh, can I go back? There we go. When they're stuck in fight or flight and they're not healing and resting and digesting, not only are they injury prone, but a lot of times they come in, they weren't digesting their food very well. They're not getting all the nutrients they want out of it. They might be reacting to some foods because the gut hasn't got the attention that it needs. And this is going to be destructive over time to the body because we need all the nutrients. We need all the water that we drink. It needs to be able to be absorbed. And that gut needs to heal and repair itself because it's doing even more than our muscles are every single day with all the food that's passing through and all the blood um, flow that has to occur in there. So that's pretty that's pretty dang important as well. So you, um, you guys already know that those adjustments are calming the brain. It's helping with brain and body awareness. It, when our athletes come in and they're like, oh man, we've tried everything. We've been going to um, sports psychologists and we've gone to training camps and we practice all the time and they're not, they're still not getting it or they're still having a really difficult time. That's when we say, you got to check the brain. You got to get on the scan. You have to look to see how the body's reacting. Um, and once again, we know adjustments are going to calm that brain and let it make better choices. But we also need sleep and rest days because some kids are really, 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 really overscheduled. Um, they go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing, and there isn't a rest day. Or if there is, we're not giving the body the nutrients that it needs to heal and recover from it. Um, which I have done on here, uh, some of our neuro supplemental um, support like omega-3s. Our magnesium that crosses the blood-brain barrier. You got to look for the right form. Citrate is for the um, the colon, and um, some gut support, especially if they're having problems with that vagus nerve and that upper cervical and that communication between the brain and the gut. Um, movement is really important on both sides of the body. If you remember when our kids were little and crawling, that's one of the things that are so important. And don't even get me started on the CDC lowering the guidelines here because that is not going to be long-term beneficial for our children and their brains and their development. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's just so sad that the CDC did that. Um, it's not going to catch you know kids that need help early. It's really not going to be good at all. But that motor pattern is how your brain is actually learns and is wired. When we start to look at kids and say, oh, they're reaching their motor milestones, their movement milestones, we know the brain's on track. Just like I talked about in the beginning, how you see their body move, that's how their brain is organized. So if their brain's moving or their body's moving very unorganized and they're you know, always falling and clumsy and running into walls, or you, know, you watch their running gait and there's a leg swinging out or an arm that's not swinging, that's the brain. That's the brain, and then it's going to need time and repetition. Once the brain is calm and you have better body awareness, we need to move it with precision. That's called cross brain pattern as well. So we can integrate the right and left sides of the brain. So it comes up, crosses over that brain stem, integrates right and left sides of the brain, and that's going to help with school. That's going to help with um, sleep, attention, focus. I mean, there's so many things that is going to be beneficial um, once that brain is, is happier and understands where those body parts are. Um, this, this is a chart, I swear I, I bring this up on probably every single slide because I love it. I think it's really encouraging to look at that the brain is always changing. When you're looking across 
um, the blue line, where you're looking at age all the way across here, and the blue line is the ability for the brain to change. And that orange line is the amount of effort that it takes. So a brain can change when we're 70. It's just going to take a lot more. But actually, some of that research that they've done um, with chiropractors, we're in nursing homes, you guys, and it was with their movement, their balance and agility with reaction time, because we know that elderly will lose that, and um, how much it was able to change. They were able to move many of these adults out of their fall risk category, which I thought was I thought was cool. Imagine how um, amazing the brain could be if we change it before that. <clears throat> so we've got some wonderful places in the area that we support. And one of them is off the field training because they are so great at looking at kids and body awareness. They deal with small children, they deal with teens, they deal with some adults, they even have adult classes. So on Thursday of next week, we are gonna have our Child Development Day, a movement and performance clinic there. Well, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the brain and you guys are probably gonna already know all the answers. And then they're gonna walk you through um, movement and um, hi Brenna we're gonna walk the body through movement and how you can when your brain knows what those body parts are and how you can move it and have that association with precision time and repetition is so huge so we love these guys and they've done such a great job so that is 7 p.m. on the 24th so next Thursday at this very same time I would love to see you guys there and we of course will have snacks and food and somebody can win a free month of training there which is so exciting I think um, I, I know that my kids have really loved it and things that have improved for them that we didn't even think about actually, um, is even been grip strength, something that they've worked on because my boys were doing flag football and I noticed that the flags were slipping up of their hands often when someone would run by and, um, after they did off the field, they were grabbing the flags really quickly. And I thought, look at that, working on that strength and that pincher grasp, how, Amazing. It's just some of the things that you don't necessarily work on um, with your kids, and they do that. They do pinch and um, grip strength. So I thought that was way, way cool. Um, thank you guys for joining me. You guys already know that chiropractic, chiropractic is here to improve your life and your life experience. Our bodies are made by an amazing design. They're extremely powerful. They have all the healing inside. We put it in the right environment. And I want kids not only to have their best life, but if you wanna play sports, I think it's so important that um, you can because it teaches us a lot of things about teamwork, about strategy, about humility, about winning, about discipline and hard work. I think it's such a fun thing to do when kids are frustrated because their body's not working the right way. If they, the brain is trying to tell our body what to do and it can't quite do it, it can't quite connect the dots, um, that's tough. So <clears throat> I want you guys to come to that event. I think most of you that are on here are already patients, but if you're not, um, let them know you've watched this webinar and let the girls know up front. They told me to say rainbows and pot of gold for you to tell them at the end of this, but you could also tell them the dyskinesia. That would be a really impressive word. Um, thanks for joining me, you guys. I hope you learned something new and as always,